All right. So can you guys think of um, an activity that you do or an area of your life that you consider yourself to be an expert in? Can you think of something? I, I've, I've, always, um, I've always identified myself as a laundry expert. And then I realized it's a really stupid thing to say. You know, because even though it may be true, it opens the door for people to flood me with their laundry, you know? Just because I'm really good at something doesn't mean I love to do it, right? But do you have things like that? Do you have things that you're, you're an expert in, that you're really, really good at, things that you're an expert in? I, I would say that I'm, I'm close to being an expert in jigsaw puzzles. Uh, I have the patience for it. I have the passion for it. And I don't cheat by looking at the lid. I'd say I'm probably an expert in that. There's other things I know I'm not an expert in. Probably more of those, right? I, 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 I like to bake. Baking is something I enjoy. But I readily acknowledge that I'm a beginner when it comes to baking. I'm a beginner in that arena. But I, I think about these different levels of expertise, right? So there's beginner level, there's intermediate level, advanced and expert. And there's, you know, so if, if you're an expert in something, you can teach other people. Whereas beginners are still focused on the basics. They're still learning the basics. And then there's, there's other ones in between. And I know, I know there's other words you could use. You could use novice and you could use master and, and all these things. But I don't want this to get too drawn out. I just want to look at these four. Beginner, intermediate, advanced, expert. Can you, can you pick certain things in your life that fit in these categories? You're a beginner in this, you're an intermediate, you're advanced, or you're an expert. I, I would say I am a beginner baker. I think I'm an intermediate griller. I think I'm pretty good at it I, and, and I like it, but I know that I've got room to grow. I think I'm advanced when it comes to teaching. And I would say, and of course, I'm, I'm an expert laundry guru, but we're not going to talk about that. But think about the things for you. And I, and I think it's an interesting thing to think about this from a spiritual perspective, right? When, when I talk to people about our Wednesday night Bible studies or Wednesday morning Bible studies, I always make a point to tell people, you do not need to be an expert in the Bible to come to these. You don't have to be an expert in this. You can be a beginner in the Bible to come to this. And I always say that because people seem to identify their, their expertise level pretty low when it comes to reading or understanding or applying the Bible. And sometimes they're wrong about that. Sometimes people are better than they think they are. But, but a lot of times we self-identify pretty low on the list when it comes to the Bible. But what about... What about when it comes to prayer? How do you identify your expertise level when it comes to prayer? Would you identify yourself as a beginner when it comes to prayer? Are you intermediate level with prayer? Are you advanced with your prayers? Or are you an expert prayer? It's an interesting question, isn't it? And it's one that I want us to think about today. Because the Bible talks about prayer a lot. You're aware of this, yeah? The Bible talks about prayer a lot. In Colossians chapter 4, Paul says, Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Pray for us too, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. And this is just one little place where Paul talks about prayer. And he talks about it a ton. Paul talks about praying without ceasing. So praying continuously, right? And he talks about praying for all believers everywhere. He talks about praying for those in authority. He talks about praying for, for himself. James talks about prayer. He talks about praying when you're sick, praying when you're joyful, etc. On and on. In all areas of life, pray. And so there's this understanding, if you're reading scripture, there's this understanding that prayer is something that Christians do. We just do it. And even though it is not stated explicitly, I do believe that there's different levels to our prayers. And, and I think that you have probably experienced this yourself, right? As our prayer lives deepen, as our prayer lives develop, our prayers look different. And so I want to think today about, you know, kind of that list. What does a beginner prayer look like? What does... What does an intermediate prayer look like? What does intermediate prayer focus on? What does advanced prayer look like? And what is expert prayer? 
want us to think about those things today. So beginner prayer. You know, when we think about beginner prayer, my, my guess is our minds immediately go to like children's prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. God is great. God is good. And we thank him for our food. Amen. Do you guys know these kind of prayers? Memorized prayers. Simple prayers. So when I think about beginner prayer, I want you to know I'm not thinking about those. That's not what I'm thinking of. When I think about beginner prayer, I'm thinking about the place that we start in relating to God. Where do you start in relating to God? So in Mark chapter 9, there's a story where Jesus goes up on the mountain and he takes a couple of the disciples with him and then he comes back down. And when he comes back down the mountain, there's this crowd at the bottom of the mountain. There's this crowd gathered. And in the middle of the crowd is this desperate father with his son. This father had brought his little boy to the disciples so that they would heal him. And they couldn't do it. They didn't know how to do it. And so Jesus comes down the mountain and this crowd is formed, there's chaos and there's confusion and he walks right into the middle of this and the father comes up and explains the situation to Jesus and he says this to Jesus. He says, have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean, if I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. And the father instantly cried out, I do believe but help me overcome my unbelief. A beginner prayer cries out to God from a place of desperation or a place of helplessness. I, I, I don't know how to fix this. I don't know how to believe the right way. I don't even know how to pray. Help me. Help me is a beginner prayer. And this isn't to say that only beginners pray these prayers, right? I pray these prayers all the time. But it's the most basic prayer that there is. Help me. It's the most basic prayer that there is. And if you don't pray that prayer, if you never pray that prayer, you probably don't know how to move on to other prayers. We see the same kind of prayer from Peter. Peter prays this prayer in Matthew 14. The, the disciples are out on a boat and in the middle of the night and it's stormy and... Jesus comes walking towards them, towards the boat, on the water. He's walking on the water. And this, of course, sends the disciples into a panic. They think he's a ghost or something, you know? And he tries to calm them down. Settle down, boys. It's just me. And Jesus tells Peter to come out to him on the water. Come out. Come here. Walk on the water towards me. And this is what happens. Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Save me, Lord. A beginner prayer cries out to God for his mercy, for his help. And we all do this. All of us do this from time to time. Do we not? We all pray be these, these basic help me, save me prayers. But here's the thing, right? If we stay in that prayer, if all you pray are these kind of prayers, you begin to see God as a lifeguard. He shows up when you need help, when you don't know how to fix a situation, when you need to be rescued. Help me, save me is a beginner prayer. We have to move beyond that. So intermediate prayer, intermediate prayer, doesn't just focus on, on you. Intermediate prayer pushes you outside of yourself to see others. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, Paul says this, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good, and it pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth, right? So beginner prayer, beginner prayer focuses on me, focuses on a time of desperation. Intermediate prayer focuses on the needs of others. And sometimes we see this called intercessory prayer. See at the top there, Paul, Paul says intercede on their behalf. It's intercessory prayers. We are, we are appealing to God on behalf of other people. My guess is this is probably the most common type of prayer that we pray. 
I stand here as one who believes in the power of God. I've experienced the power of God. I'm asking for that power to help other people. We pray this a lot. We pray it here all the time, don't we? Anytime you pray for someone to be healed, anytime you pray for safety for those that are traveling, for guidance, for blessings, for encouragement, for power, anytime you're praying for open doors for other people, you are practicing intermediate prayer, intercessory prayer. It doesn't focus on you. You're focusing on other people. So anytime that we're praying intercessory prayer, intermediate prayer, we're pushing us outside of ourselves. And it's, this is really beneficial prayer. It's good to pray these kind of prayers because it reminds me that God is not just my personal God, but he's other people's God too. It also reminds me that I have the ability to tap into the power of God to help those I care about. And when I'm struggling, I can ask people to do the same for me. And Paul does this. I mean, Paul, you know, read Paul's letters. He regularly says, pray for me. Pray. He asks people to pray for him. And we can do that, right? So beginner prayer, beginner prayer focuses on, on myself and it's situational. It's situational. When I need help, I pray for God to help me. But intermediate prayer is a prayer that, is a prayer that you can practice. You can practice this. You just make a list of your neighbors. Think about, the people, think about the people in your neighborhood. People that live next door to you. Think about classmates at school, right? Think about your coworkers, extended family. Make a list and pray over each of them. Ask God to bless them. Help them. Provide for them. Encourage them. You are practicing intercessory prayer. You're practicing intermediate prayer. You're not focusing on you. You're focusing on the needs of others. So, it, beginner prayer it focuses on me, time of desperation, help me, save me. And if I stay there, I see God as a lifeguard. Intermediate prayer focuses on others, but if we stay there, we start to see God as a genie who dispenses blessings on people that we care about. So the next type of prayer is harder, advanced prayer. And advanced prayer pushes us outside of our comfort zones. And we see this in Luke 6. Here's what Jesus says. But to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. Pray for those who hurt you. You know why this is advanced prayer? Because it's stinking hard. It is. You know, I mean, when, when we intentionally pray for, for people who hurt us, this takes us way outside of our comfort zone. You know, I mean, beginner prayer focuses on me. Desperate times, help me, save me. Intermediate prayer focuses on the needs of others, but mostly people that I care about. My family, my friends, acquaintances. Advanced prayer pushes me to pray for the benefit of people who I don't like. So why would Jesus tell me to do such a thing? Why does he want us to do this? I think there's two reasons why Jesus tells us to love our enemies and pray for those who hurt you. Pray for those who hurt you. The first reason is this. Your enemies are your enemies for a reason. And the reason, usually, is that they're jerks. Is this generally true? You think about the people that you would consider your enemies, and this, they're probably in that category because they're jerks, right? So what, what, is, what good does it do for me to pray for them? What does it do when I pray for them? Ideally, what it does is it keeps me from becoming a jerk. You get, you get what I'm saying here? When I intentionally pray for people I don't like, when I intentionally pray for people who hurt me, when I'm intentionally praying for people that work against me, I remind myself that God has called me to a higher path. Not to where they are, he's called me to a higher path. So instead of praying for them to get theirs, I pray for them to be blessed. And it's hard to do that. It's really hard because what I want is I want to pray for God to smack them. That's what I want to do. But if I, listen, this is just, if I pray for God to smack them, I am driving dangerously close to the jerk side of the road myself. 
right? So Jesus tells me to pray for my enemies and pray for those that I don't like to keep me focused on who God has called me to be, not on who they choose to be. So that's one reason Jesus tells us to pray for our enemies. The other reason that he tells us to pray for our enemies is that God made them and God loves them too. Even if I don't like them, God loves them. You know, in, in Luke 6, this, this passage, just a couple of verses later, Jesus is talking about why should we love our enemies? Why do you do this? And he says, when you love your enemies, here's what happens. When you love your enemies, you will truly be acting as children of the Most High. For he is kind, talking about God, God is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. I mean, God is nice to mean people. God is still nice to them. You must be compassionate, Jesus says, just as your father is compassionate. And you get what he's saying, right? God doesn't play favorites. God provides for good people and jerks. And he wants us to represent him in this world. So when we pray for those that we don't like, we are representing our God. And this is hard. This is hard. I get it. This is hard. You don't see, you don't see this very often, but we see examples of this in the Bible. This kind of prayer. You see this in the Bible when Jesus is hanging on the cross. And when Stephen is being stoned to death in the book of Acts. And both of them pray for God to forgive their murderers because they don't really understand what they're doing. Is that an easy prayer? No. That's why it's advanced. This is advanced prayer, praying for your enemies. So when we pray for, pray for you know, our, ourselves in desperate time, this beginner prayer, we pray for, for other people, our friends, our family, um, that's intermediate prayer. Praying for enemies is advanced prayer. All of these prayers, all of these prayers are asking God to do something for, for people, right? And we're asking God to do something. And that's good. I mean, Jesus tells us to do that. He says, ask, seek, knock, he tells us to do that. Expert prayer, the hardest prayer is different from this. And you don't see it very often. In fact, you hardly ever see it, to be honest with you. You hardly ever see it. But we see an example of it in Mark 14, when Jesus goes into the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples, and he asks them to come and, and pray with him. Jesus knows that the journey he's on is about, to, is about to end, and that he's about to undergo intense suffering physical suffering, emotional, mental, spiritual suffering. And to be honest, he doesn't know if he can do it. So he asks his disciples to come with, and, and this is what happens in verse 34. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. I mean, imagine Jesus, right? You can imagine him. My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and he fell to the ground and he prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. The hardest prayer to pray is thy will be done. When I know what I want, when I know what I need, when I know exactly what has to happen for this to work out well, and I still pray, thy will be done, I have become an expert prayer. Expert prayer is a prayer of surrender. It's a prayer of surrender. And even though praying for your enemies is hard, this is much harder because I'm praying that God's will will be done in my life. And even if the, the result of my prayer is painful for me, even if it is not what I want, even if it goes against what makes sense to me, I'm saying that I will trust your will over my own. This is crazy hard to pray this and, and, and to mean it. Because it's, we, what we want to do so often is dictate to God how things should go. But the hardest prayer to pray is thy will be done. We're going to do it your way and not mine. I, I hope it goes without saying that using the words thy will be done does not make it an expert prayer. Right? Using the words isn't what counts. 
It's your heart. Do you authentically want the will of God even if you don't get what you want? If you really, really do, that's expert prayer. So this is, this is just kind of prayer 101 stuff, right? I mean, prayer is, is an area that hardly anyone ever feels completely competent in because we always have this feeling that we should be praying more. Listen, the goal today is not to pray more. The goal is simply to pray. Prayer is, prayer is beautiful. Prayer is how you connect to your, the heart of your God. Prayer gives you an avenue to say anything that you need to say and to know that you are loved. Prayer reminds you of the intimate presence of the one who died for you. Prayer taps into the power of God for healing, for direction. Prayer reminds you of the abounding love that he has for you. It's not meant to make you feel guilty. And so if you're struggling, that you sometimes go from beginner prayer to advanced to intermediate to expert back to beginner, don't stress about that. Don't stress about that. If you're stressed that you're stuck in one place, in one prayer spot for a month, don't stress about that. Practice different kinds. Practice praying for your enemies. Authentically pray for them to be blessed. Practice praying for your extended family, your classmates. Pray for the will of God and seek. What does that mean? What does it mean if I actually want God's will over my own? Prayer is not meant to give you stress. It's meant to bring you peace. So let's pray. Lord, today we come and we seek your will. We have all these expectations in our mind about what prayer looks like, and what it sounds like, and how often you have to do it, and do you have to fold your hands the right way, or lift them up, or close your eyes, and none of that really matters. What matters is that we are talking to you, that we are sharing ourselves with you, and we are allowing your spirit to speak to us. Today, Lord, help us to focus on the power of prayer in our own lives. We all have those times when we cry out, help us, save us. We don't know what to do. We all have people in our lives that need prayer, need encouragement, family members, friends, people that we know. We all have enemies. We all have people that push our buttons and get under our skin, Lord. And we need to pray for them so that we don't lose sight of who you call us to be. But we remember that they're made, they're made to be loved by you as well. But Lord, ultimately what we want is your will to be done. Not our own, but your will. And so we pray, Lord, that our hearts would be formed to match that of Jesus Christ. This is not easy stuff. We know this is not easy stuff. But Lord, this is your will for us. So we offer up our prayers, seeking your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.